hey y'all happy sunday <laughs> welcome back to the vlog if you're new here i'm valerie and this is a recap of the shy season five um how about ep <laughs> season three episode five how about that so y'all this episode was just as intense as episode four and i am here for it i absolutely love this episode if you love this episode give it a thumbs up you have to have loved this episode for the um intensity and the uh, engagement that it really gave the viewers this time and i'm actually really excited to see the next episode it's like the first three episodes eased us on in episode four we didn't started to take off in episode five we're still up there so then the beginning of this episode um we actually see that keisha is alive which is a relief i kind of knew she was alive i had a feeling that this whole time that she was alive okay so we see that she's locked in someone's what appears to be their basement or house something like that she's locked somewhere like that with a guy a guy has her locked up and at this point how long has she been missing y'all has she been missing we're gonna say about a month she's been missing for a month so if you look around in the guy's apartment you'll see or the place that he has keisha locked up we see that he has like track stuff he has track suits it's really weird it's almost like as if he was stalking her and um he made this room either he was stalking her or she was had met this guy online because you know keisha was dating older seeing older guys she was interested in older guys so either she was um involved with him voluntarily and then it led to this like he tricked her or he actually kidnapped her from that bus stop um, which what is what it looks like it looks like she was taken from the bus stop because her phone was left behind so yeah he's got like all that that track trophies and he's got flyers of her being missing and newspaper articles and stuff of her and things like that on the wall and he's giving her a bath and calling himself daddy and things like that and telling her she's filthy so he's one of those type of people and hopefully she makes it out alive but um yeah that's how this episode opens up and then um we see ronnie getting baptized at i guess it's the 63rd street beach i don't know they're in chicago it's not too much water um they just have that water on the uh shore there so he's getting baptized and along with some of the other church members but I was like, you know, Ronnie's getting baptized. Ronnie's trying to get his life together. I guess he decided to take the pastor up on his offer to um, help him hear the Lord more clearly. So he decides to get baptized. And then, um, yeah, so that's what's going on with Ronnie. Ronnie's getting his life together. He's getting, um, <clears throat> just getting baptized and trying to, he's trying to figure out who he is, like, even at this age, you know, it's really weird that we're always recreating ourselves, that we're always fig finding out more about ourselves the older that we get. And um, that's pretty much what Ronnie's got going on. And this guy is a really good actor. I can't pronounce his name, uh, his real name, but Ronnie is a very good... This role that he's playing right here is going to be a role that sticks with him, like... He's really a bum in my mind that's really <laughs> that's really working to get his life together. But in the next scene, you see Emmett. Um, and I've been waiting, y'all. Have y'all been waiting and wondering when Emmett was going to tell Sonny that he was running a business outside of his restaurant? Because Emmett had to know that the bills were going to go up. Like, he had to know that people run their mouths and people talk. So... When did he think that Sonny was going to find out that he was running an establishment out of his restaurant? And that could really jeopardize Sonny's restaurant because there are rules and regulations and things like that that need to be abided by in order to have a restaurant up and running. And Emmett is just doing whatever. So he's really could really cause a lot of um, potential um, citations and things like that 
food poisoning, anything that could fall back on Sonny because he's running this operation out of Sonny's business. But Sonny comes in and he he gives Emmett a chance to tell the truth. And I knew this was him giving Emmett a chance to tell the truth because he asked Emmett, he said, you know, you're tired. And I heard that people been leaving out. I heard somebody saying you leave out of here at 2 o'clock. And Emmett told Sonny a lie straight to his face. And I was like, oh, Emmett. Now would have been the time. You know, he should have been told. I was like, dang, he should have asked. If anything, he should have asked Sonny. Could he do that? And if Sonny said no, then it was a no. He just would have had to just beg Sonny. If he would have begged Sonny, Sonny already has a lot of faith in Emmett and he wants to see Emmett do well. Sonny probably would have agreed. He would have said, okay. Because Emmett does mention that you know, um, to Dominique, because Dominique even asks him, like, when are we going to tell Sonny that we are running this business outside of his business? And Emmett says, well, I'm going to tell him when I got something to give him because. Sonny is behind on the rent in this place, so I want to be able to help him out, which is a good gesture, but um, it does put things in perspective when it comes to Emmett, that Emmett is still young, he's still immature, and he just doesn't know what he's doing, you know, it was real reckless what he's doing, even though it seems like what he's doing is good because he's earning money, he's figuring out a way to earn money, it's still reckless and irresponsible, and that's just, he's just young and childish, and that's that's his place. That's where he's at, you know? So, yeah, that scene right there, I just knew that Emmett should have went ahead and told Sonny the truth. I was like, God, he should have been told Sonny. But, hey. Y'all, so the next scene is when Candy and Duda are having sex in his uh, Duda's office and Otis's office. Y'all, they didn't show that part on the preview. Because I was waiting. I would have been waiting like, oh, I'm ready to see that scene, y'all. Because, you know, Candy always makes it seem like, or maybe we're taking it that way, that she is like a real freak. You know, she's got her bedroom candy, which is her um, adult toy collection. She got some nice stuff, but um, that's besides the point. She has, she has her adult toy store that she's got going on, and she always is promoting it and... She's also got um, bedroom talk or something it is. Candy Coated Nights. Candy Coated Nights. She has Candy Coated Nights where she has all these conversations about all kind of things. It's like a little podcast that she does with her and her friends. And they, they always be getting kinky on the little podcast. So she always has that giving off that vibe that she's a real freak but then she tries to take it back and says i'm not even real freaky like that but she always is doing something real freaky so i was waiting to see this i a lot of someone i was waiting i didn't even know this scene was here but when i seen that scene i watched it and i read it back and watched it again because i was like let me see how candy is gonna act because acting is almost kind of like acting is putting your mind actually there and then sometimes it's also from actually doing these things, you know. So I was like, let me see how comfortable she is playing this role. Because I've never seen her play a role like this. I don't even think I've ever seen Candy acting. If I remember right, I've never seen her acting. But I ran it back and I was like, okay, you know, it was okay. You know, and she was giving dude I... Uh, or Otis, I guess we'll call him Otis because he's Otis right now in his office. She was giving him a little pep talk and saying, you know, you really got to get the vote of the North Side. And she was like, when did black people um, not become as homophobic as they used to be? And I was like, you know, Lena Waithe is really pushing the agenda. Like, you're, you're pushing it. You're pushing it. You know, she's putting that persona out there, I don't know, I, or I, I believe in the law of attraction and the manifestation, so she's putting that, and then you also know that television is perspect is a uh, really subjective, you know, and people that's watching it, there are subliminals there, and that was a subliminal message, in my opinion, y'all let me know if I'm tripping, if I'm getting into the conspiracy stuff too much, I'm not really a, a real conspiracist, but it is what it is, she does say that when did black people not be as homophobic as they used to be, so she's worried about Camille, 
winning the election because you know she wants her husband to win the election but she played that part she did a good job she looks comfortable um and yeah i was like okay i can i can get i like that scene better than i like jada's scene with sway much better jay <laughs> jada seemed real just insecure and just needed to get some real quick um but yeah this um when she and she also um rosalind also dude's wife rosalind also tells him that he needs to use jake and as a, a tool in this campaign in order to pull in the north side because you know he goes to school on the north side and he can also rein in the votes on the south side because he's from the south side so she's giving him some pointers while giving him some pointers <laughs> okay i was like yeah that's how you do it have a pep talk <laughs> you know make things happen do y'all ever believe in like sex magic I was kind of upset when she was saying, um, I don't know if you're going to beat her while they were in the middle of having sex. Because I, I like, believe in the magic, you know, two coming together. It's, never mind. But <laughs> I was kind of like, don't manifest that. Don't say that. Why? <laughs> Not right now. Just don't say that ever. But yeah, y'all, it, it was a scene to be seen. <laughs> But yeah, so also keeping in the theme of um, normalizing homosexuality in the LGBTQ community, the next scene is Trig is back in this episode. Trig is back. So is Imani. Y'all, I was kind of upset that Camille wasn't in this episode. I don't know what she would have done. After you watched the whole episode, I don't know where she... I guess she could have done something when the lights... When the... um power went out the same way that um otis did when they went in the community and did some community outreach he used that as an opportunity to do that but um yeah trig and imani are back in the episode and trig is in the house protecting the house because he's scared of the 63rd street mob because he went over there uh he had went over there and um tried to see if uh keisha was over there so he's afraid of the 63rd street mob but um imani is like dude chill out and she over there with her her people you know the people are another transgender person and a, another person that, who appears to be gay so come to find out imani does hair imani is a hairdresser so imani's doing hair and then her friend says her friend is on something like grinder or something like that tinder grinder she's looking for straight men to have sex with so Imani is telling her, you need to get off of there because once they found out, once these these men want, that hate themselves find out that they had sex with you and you're a transgender, they going to kill you because they hate themselves. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, how are you just going to put that out there? Like, that part of it, I was just like... Like, I personally, I don't care what your sexual orientation is, so long as you let someone know that up front. Like, if you're gay, you know, if you approach me and you're a trans man, before you even ask for my number, I want you to be like, I, used, I was born a woman, and I am now a man. Like, don't get my number, don't get me emotionally involved, and then tell me, oh yeah, I used to be a woman, because I'm not interested in dating women. I like men. Like, I I like men, and I like what men can do. And there's, there's, you can't do that, you know? You're a woman. You can't do that. You're a woman that looks like a man. A man. But, um, and that's just my stance on that, and there's nothing that's going to change that. I'm totally accepting of what you want to do. I That's on you. But the truth is the truth, period. That, you know, um, truth has the power okay overall you know you wouldn't be getting killed probably if you told the truth and then there are some people out there that just don't care if you had told them the truth they still might be upset so even still i just didn't like i didn't like that part of the show what are y'all thoughts on it and how she is really pushing the um normalization of the LGBTQ community.
What, what were y'all thoughts on it? Okay, and then also in this scene, the social worker comes over because Trig is still adamant about getting custody of his brother, Jake. So the social worker comes over. She notices a few things. How do y'all feel about Trig and his attitude? You know, he really had a really aggressive attitude when the social worker came over. Like, why are you asking me all these questions? Then he put on the application that he was married to Imani. And he really isn't married to Imani. So the lady's like, oh, so this is just your girlfriend. Because y'all not married. I don't know why you put married on here. And Trig gets all upset. Like, well, we are married. And, you know, he had that outlet that needed to be fixed in order. Because it was a safety hazard. But... You know, you, you catch more flies with honey, right? I was like, why is Trig acting like this? He's real emotional. Why don't he just chill out, listen to what the lady has to say, and then Imani's doing hair without a hair license. I say, okay, so y'all in here playing house, playing hair salon and everything. Y'all just, y'all got to get it together. Y'all, y'all... <laughs> He playing like he ain't gay. She playing like a hairdresser. Don't have no hair license the first. And he talking about this his wife. I was like, Lord, Pixie Jesus. So, yeah, that's what's going on with Trig and Imani. They didn't have too much of a role in this episode. But it was refreshing to see them back in the episode, y'all. So, y'all, in the next scene... Gemma actually comes down to the south side to meet Kevin. Gemma is the girl's name. Did y'all see her earrings this time? Say black girl magic. So, yeah. She comes to meet Jake and um, Kevin and Papa, but Jake isn't happy to see her. Jake is like, why'd you invite this girl? And then, um, yeah. But they ended up going to a haunted house. So, Maisha actually shows up, too. So, Kevin has his little date with Gemma. Maisha is date, now dating Papa. Or they're still hanging out. They're close. They're getting closer, checking each other out. And it's real cute. And then um, Kevin, Jake asked Kevin, like, why you invite me if you was going to invite Gemma? You know, I don't like that. And he's like, don't be calling my girl a beep. <laughs> And I was like, okay, Kevin's taking up for Gemma. That is the cutest little thing. I was like, I know that's right. And, um, yeah, so they all go to a haunted house, what's supposed to be a haunted house. And I was like, oh, that's fun. But Jake was like, why you invite me if you was going to invite her? And Kevin says, because I wanted you to come. So I was like, they are good friends. Like, those are friends that, you know, I like how the show is making them friends that will, should, will probably be friends for life. But he's like, because I wanted you to come. And they still included him. And it's the cutest little thing. So, yeah, they end up going to the honey house. And while they're at the honey house, that's when the whole blackout happened. <laughs> that's when the blackout happened. And uh, they ended up getting scared. But before they uh, the blackout happens, they show us Keisha again. So Keisha's locked in a basement somewhere and um while she's down there the guy has like monitors watching motion sensor monitors monitors so whoever the guy is that has her is an older guy because the sound of his voice is older you know your voice changes as you get older so the sound of his voice is older and then also um he's tall he's skinny we haven't quite seen his face do y'all know who he is do you have a clue of who he is i can't quite think of it. I only watched the episode once and then I'm kind of running it back to make to refresh my memory while I'm doing this recap. But I don't really know who he is. I, I can't really put my hand on it. I thought he might have been the guy that found Miss Ethel because uh, Miss Ethel is still alive. Y'all, I knew, I just knew that they had killed off her character. And I, I didn't question if they killed her off or not because this is supposed to be the last season of this. So I was like, they killing off all the, um, all the characters? Wow. But y'all cannot lie. Tell me, when y'all watched the last, the last episode in that scene, when um, Ronnie goes to Dre in Nina's apartment and says, I... He said this exactly, and he said it in a way where it alluded to the fact that Miss Ethel was gone. 
he says so they did that on purpose they really they really did that on purpose on the last episode to make us think that miss ethel was dead and i know i'm not the only one because when i watched the preview for this episode last week when i watched the preview for episode five right here everybody was in the comments like how they just killed miss ethel off like that did y'all notice that they killed miss ethel and that i had said that they I posted this video before they posted that preview. I posted my my last recap saying that Miss Ethel could be dead. I put a question mark there um, that she could possibly be dead because that's what it seemed like they alluded to. Uh, Ronnie says that I promised my grandma that I'd do something great with my life before she died. And the way he said it, it wasn't like, you know, I'm going to do it before she dies. The way he said it was like, I promised my grandma I would do something great with my life before she dies. I mean, before she died. He didn't say before she dies. He said before she died. So that gives me a past tense feeling. If you, if she was still alive, why didn't you say, I promised my grandma I'd do something great with my life before she dies? Or something, you know, like that. And then even in this episode, when uh, Ronnie is at the church, he goes to church, the people in the church are talking of, speaking of his grandmother in past tense. That's how I know they tried to trick me up on that last episode and they got me. Because they talking about his grandma in past tense, but Ronnie's talking about his grandma in the present tense. He's like, yeah, she, they was like, yeah, she sure did love to do this. And when she was here, she loved to do that. It was in past tense. But then Ronnie's like, yeah, that is her favorite uh, hymn. This is my grandma's. He's talking to her about her in present tense. And after that whole conversation in that scene, he says, you know, after the blackout happens and that whole conversation, he says, you know what? Let me go check on my grandma. So I'm like, what the heck? So is Miss Ethel alive? And he gets all the way to the place where she's being kept and she's not there. So I was like, oh my goodness, you know, they still got us on the edge. I'm like, is she alive? So if y'all caught that and y'all agree that 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 was an excusable mistake right there. Then you gotta you gotta you gotta subscribe now. You gotta thumbs up the video. But yeah, y'all, if y'all caught that and y'all caught the vibe and you feel where I'm coming from, if you know, you know. But yeah, Keisha is um let's bring it on back. Let's bring it back. Keisha is in this guy's basement or wherever. Do y'all think that she's at the shelter, maybe? In the basement of the shelter? I don't know because you know she, Ronnie was looking for that all men's shelter. Y'all think she might be in the basement of that all men's shelter? Because the guy that has got her held captive keeps saying, I'm going to take care of you. When I found you, you were filthy and things like that. Do you think that he's somebody? Because he's somebody in the neighborhood and, she, and she's been found in the neighborhood. She's in the neighborhood. Because you remember that somebody mentions that the lights are only out in the south side in some other part of Chicago. So she's somewhere in the neighborhood just locked in somebody's basement and that shelter is somewhere in the neighborhood too because ronnie was walking to the shelter after he found his uh grandmother so y'all here come baby royalty she wants to say hi say hi sweet pea yeah so <clears throat> say hi mommy leave that alone say hi say hi baby hi hi baby good job Oh, she's so cute, y'all. Can I try? <laughs> hi, baby. Hi. You say hi to the people. Say like and subscribe. Yes. Good job. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all. So, Keisha's in somebody's basement. And um, I'm wondering if, if y'all think that she is inside of the basement in the shelter Y'all, let me know what you think. In the next scene, Jada is on a date with Tomas. I was like, okay, Jada, I see you out here dating you a little Hispanic uh, boo. I was like, okay, I might be right behind you. When I, <laughs> I love me a black man, but y'all been acting up. I might have to, I might have to dip on out. I'm tired of you nakers. I'm going to have to find me something else. But anyway, um, Jada ends up going to, y'all, uh, I don't know how it be a fly. I think somebody be opening a, my oldest be opening a window back here on a fly. It's always a fly in this room. But anyway, 
Jada ends up going on a um, to a family gathering with uh, Tomas, and she learns that Tomas has a um, he was married. So Tomas, they must have been talking for a while before Tomas decided to invite Jada to his um, his family gathering because he doesn't seem like the type that would just automatically bring someone to a family gathering. I remember when, because um, I didn't really like him at first when he told, uh, when Jada, he asked Jada, do she want to go get a drink? And Jada says, oh, I don't date co-workers. And Tomas was like, we're not dating this is not a date and she was like oh so you want to go get drinks as a friend he was like well we ain't friends either and i was like well excuse me but i guess he's the type this it is what it is like you know you kind of want that i i now i can appreciate it you know i was a little taken back and then but then again i did appreciate where he was coming from but that's when his mom feels uh and his brother brings up the fact that um tomas has a wife that passed and they all they were comparing jada to his wife and they asked jada do she speak does she speak spanish and jada tells a joke like i only know hello and goodbye or like hola adios <laughs> in spanish then that's all i know and they kind of were like girl like it wasn't funny to them you know that's their language and it just wasn't funny so i guess they were kind of thinking like well how is this gonna work and i'm like so she can't learn another language y'all didn't think that was a great opportunity to teach her another language and she's gonna be a part of the family you know i'm not really fluent in spanish i know enough to get around if i was somewhere that um spanish was fluent not spain but somewhere in somewhere in tijuana i could get around um Cause you know those are two types, two different types of Spanish. But uh, I probably could get around in Spain too with the Spanish that I know. They probably would laugh at me because. But anyway, um, yeah. So I was like, hmm. But you know, Jada goes in the restroom. If y'all remember from one of my recaps, I said Jada was very insecure. So in this episode, Jada goes in the restroom and she's got her affirmation app on her phone from Elanya. Fix my, fix my life. She's like, I am worthy, and she gets upset that Tomas has a wife that's passed away and that's dead, and he hasn't told her, and I guess she feels like there's some type of competition there between her and his, or maybe that she may feel that he hasn't quite gotten over his wife, his ex-wife, you know, so he, she didn't know that he was a widow and, and a widower, and um, she feels some type of way about it she feels conflicted about her role in his life and now she needs some assurance that she is worthy and i'm like girl his wife is dead and he ain't cheating his wife is dead why are you feeling some type of way you looking for a reason you know i didn't know that his wife was i mean uh jada was that insecure but i had a feeling that she was you know because of her dating choices like ronnie out of all people she almost slept with her baby daddy so i was like she is really insecure and really desperate but this episode really put things in perspective so what are y'all what, what were y'all thoughts y'all y'all feel free to comment i've getting a lot of views but not too many comments um y'all let me know what you think i'm interested to know what your thoughts are so um say something Say something when you come here. <laughs> y'all, um, how do y'all feel about all of the, all of the friends, Jake, Kevin, and Papa, Maisha, telling Gemma that she ain't really one of them, you know, when they were deciding how to, how to get to, uh, back to the South, well, back to where they were at. Because they were over visiting the haunted house. How do y'all feel about them letting her know that you're not one of us? You're really from the north side. You you didn't grow up over here. I was like, mm, you know. And she tells them that money isn't everything. Because Jake was telling her, like, I got street knowledge. And that's going to make me a lot of money one day. Which is true. Street knowledge can make you a lot of money also. Um, but um, how do y'all feel about that? So they end up leaving the haunted house and... Um, y'all remember when I told y'all that, um, Miss Ethel was not in a good nursing home? So that Miss Ethel was out loose and lost. Y'all, she was lost, uh, when, um, 
when Ronnie went to go check on his grandmother during the blackout. He finds out that Miss Ethel is lost. You know she has dementia. I was like, see, this is how them Hattie calls be going out. That not that what they call them when the older people be missing? Isn't it a Hattie's call or something? Um, yeah, so they, I was like, this is how they be, uh, this is how that type of stuff happens. But um, during the uh, blackout, like I said before, Otis is still campaigning. He's using it as an opportunity. But Keisha is locked in his basement. Y'all, this episode was really intense and it had me really captivated and really going through it because I have experienced a situation similar to Keisha's and the part where she was trying to escape reminded me of that part of my story when I was trying to escape and bust the window out when I was being held um, captive like this before. And the guy is in lives on the south side because the power only went out on the south side remember that's what they said so i was like it's somebody that everybody knows that's doing it which a lot of times people tell you and in my even in my instance it was somebody that was in the family it was a family member so it's like it's always somebody that people know that is um not always but excuse me it, it tends to be people that you know, but this episode was kind of hard. It was hard to watch because it, like I said, for me, it brought up some personal memories. And I, I was like really there where her, like, get out. And even when she busted the first door open, she got upset and she and finally figured out a way to get that first door open. The first thing I heard was run. As soon as the door got open, but you know, they they had her character kind of take time. I was like, run. You got to run. I was actually there with her. And I know this is a fake story, but like I said, I've experienced something very similar to this. So it me watching it is a little bit different from somebody else who hasn't really experienced it, but just watching the show. But it, when it was that second door there, I was like, I almost cried because I was like, okay, we got to get through this second door. But y'all, when she got pulled back into the house, into the basement, and she was screaming, and Ronnie heard her screaming, I was like, oh my God. Like, you know, when she had finally got out, I had some sense of relief. I was like, okay, good. Now we can move on with this um, season. It's, not, it's no longer going to be about finding Keisha. Maybe we can find out a little bit about uh, more about Camille, get into the campaign a little bit get some like that power type of show action going on and um maybe we can find a little bit more out about trig and imani and see more of uh jada's dating life and see what's going on with sunny and all the other characters from the last season which i guess i feel like they're not going to bring those characters back because this is this is mid-season right here we it's only five more episodes it's only 10 episodes in this season so um, I guess they're going to go ahead and drag it out. I've seen in the comments on other recaps and um, also on the preview for um, these episodes. People are saying, is the whole season going to be about finding Keisha? I hope the season isn't going to be about finding Keisha. So I had some type of relief when she finally got out. And then when she got dragged back in, I was like, oh my God, they're going to continue to drag this out. The rest of this season is going to continue to be about finding Keisha, you know, but it, um, y'all know what? Dre and Nina wasn't in this episode either. Yeah, Dre and Nina wasn't in this episode. Camille wasn't in the episode. So, um, yeah, I was, um, and then they ended the, they ended the episode when Ronnie was hearing, cause Ronnie, you know, Miss Ethel still told him that he got to find Keisha. So the episode ended when Ronnie was, um, hearing stuff. He was hearing things about, uh, he was hearing Keisha screaming help. So he was getting ready to go help her. But do y'all think that the guy that was helping, helping Miss Ethel when Miss Ethel escaped from the nursing home or wandered away from the nursing home, do you think that the guy that was helping Miss Ethel is the guy that has Keisha locked in his basement? Because where was the guy going? Where was the guy at while Keisha was bamming and getting out? Where was he at? He didn't hear her making all that noise to get out. I know that the motion sensors probably more than likely stopped working if they were plugged up. 
um, and using electricity, they stopped working. So he wasn't able to see her escaping, but he didn't hear her escaping. And when she kicked her way out of that building, it looked like she was, it wasn't a house that she was in. It may have been a building, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, yeah, y'all, but... I don't know y'all that that scene I wanted it to be over and it's just it's a lot that it for me personally that it's not over and um, I still want her to come out alive I feel like she's gonna come out alive um, so <laughs> I know it's just a character but I, I want her to come out alive but do y'all think that that guy is the one that has her captive the one that was with Miss Ethel Okay, and on a brighter note, so at um when yeah, on a brighter note, Pooh, when Mid, when uh, Maisha and Papa decided to make it official that they were a couple, it was the cutest thing. I was like, okay, Papa, y'all did that because they asked each other what were the requirements for us to be dating. You know, sometimes these kids just be go ahead full throttle be then had sex and then after they had sex decided that they were in a relationship only to come to find out they weren't in a relationship so i thought it was really cute that um maisha and papa went ahead and made it official that they would be in a relationship dating each other they gave each other the requirements and i love that maisha said i'm gonna hold you accountable for reading your bible and they asked each other what do you need from me what do i need from you and let's, you know, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. I was like, this is some stuff that grown-ups need to um, be doing. <laughs> you know, like, if you're in a relationship, what, how are you going to help each other? That's pretty much what they were saying. Like, how... Here, Paul, hold on for a second. How is this relationship going to benefit us? Go, Roy, Roy. <laughs> she like, let me down. I don't care. So I thought it was the cutest little thing. And then the little dancing... Um, I, I like that too when I seen Gemma and I also seen um, Gemma and uh, Kevin and then Papa and Maisha were dancing and then you seen um, what, um, royalty you seen Emmett walk past I was like oh this is such a good time right now like the music was playing I was like yes y'all y'all remember that scene that was a scene that really gave me some good feelings, but y'all. Come on, you wanna dance, Pooh? Let's dance. <laughs> hey! Go, Ray Ray. Go, Ray Ray. Go, Ray Ray. Go, Ray Ray. Wait, right, let's quickly go back to um, and retouch on the part where Emmett um, gets. Um, What's the girl's name? Sadie. Sadie comes out because Emmett decides to go ahead and sell food during the blackout. And she, Sadie is a food reviewer. She's a food critic. And she is there and she's about to taste some of the food because she's going to give her review on it. And Dom says, Dominique says, I don't want her to taste my food because this isn't my best food. And this ain't even my chicken. This is Sonny's chicken. So Emmett then went ahead and used Sonny's chicken. I knew it was all about to come down on this part i was like either when sadie the food critic showed up i've just said in my mind like this is how god works either uh sadie's gonna write a review and sunny's gonna be like what is this i don't have i don't sell these foods in my restaurant or sunny's gonna show up because sunny already gave emma the chance to come and tell him the truth but um dom tells emma don't give Sadie any of my food because I don't want her reviewing this. This isn't my best food. This isn't really even my food But Emmett doesn't listen and him being the child that he is the, the, the man child that he is He gives uh, the critics some of the food Shortly after that Sonny shows up like what the hell is going on? What do you got going on? I knew that this was going on. You think I didn't know I gave you a chance to tell me and Sonny is just hurt because he he tells Emmett exactly how he feels like a grown man. He was like, I'm hurt. I gave you the chance to tell me the truth. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why you lied in my face? I had more hope for you. I thought you was going to be growing into a, a, a decent young man. And he, he basically puts Emmett out. He tells Emmett to leave. So y'all, do y'all think that Emmett and, um, is this giving the opportunity for Emmett and Dominique to now, um, work together 
or is Dominique gonna go back to her home? And is she, when she goes back to, well, I'm pretty sure she probably still running her restaurant from her home, y'all. I'm um, pretty sure that ain't stopped because she was only working at Sunny's at night. So, um, do, what do y'all think? What do y'all think is the next step for Emmett? Because he keep a business plan up his sleeve. So, and he's still a little bit flirty with Dominique. So, I still think that there is going to be something that happens between him and Dominique. But, yeah, that, that part of the show happened. And it was kind of... I didn't feel bad for Emmett because Emmett should not have um, been running that restaurant without Sonny knowing. And then again, I did feel bad for Emmett because Emmett, he be trying. It's just like he just don't be doing it right. Like, you just got to be grown about it. Communicate, tell people what's going on. And he should have been told Sonny that he was running that restaurant outside of his restaurant. And that's just the end of the story. But... Um, when Jake runs to his brother's house after seeing what happened with Duda, I was like, how is Jake scared of Duda running to, um, Trigg's house when he knows this is what Duda is about? You know, when he sees Duda beat up that guy for, um, covering up his sign. Well, it wasn't for covering up his signs. Even though I was mad that he was covering up the signs. When I seen that he was spray painting them signs, I got so mad. If y'all don't know, I'm Valerie and I buy houses. If you have a house that you like to sell, um, old houses, abandoned houses, uh, just a house that you would like to sell, I wholesale houses, email me. My information will be in the description there. Um, but I, if you ever drive around in those um, certain areas and you've seen those signs that say, I buy houses, that's me. But mine says, Valerie buys houses. <laughs> so I buy houses, Valerie buys houses. Um, just ask Val1111 is my, at gmail.com is my email address. I'll put it in the description box. You can email me if you have a house that you would like to sell. But I put those signs up and those signs are not uh, cheap. So when I seen that guy writing on, spray painting over them signs, I was so pissed off. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. I know you ain't do that. You know how much them signs cost? But <laughs> um, uh, Otis was more upset because his ego was bruised when the guy told him that he'll never be the mayor. You know, he ain't who he think he is. You'll never be the mayor. You're not fit for it. So, um, he, he's upset because he has a bruised ego. And remember in the last episode, he said that his teacher once said that. So, you know, that's something that really strikes a nerve with him. And, um, it's just crazy to see that, um, Jake ran over to his brother's house after seeing that incident because Jake had just had some type of bonding moment with, uh, Otis or Duda inside of his office. So that's where Jake was. Because I was wondering when Kevin and Maisha and Papa and and Gemma was at um, Sonny's having a good time and dancing and stuff. Where was Jake? I'm like, where is Jake? So Jake was over with Mr. Uh, Perry. Um, you know, having a heart to heart with Mr. Perry. So yeah, y'all. What do y'all think about this episode? I believe the next episode is going to be just intense. It can't help but to be intense. Because we're either going to find Keisha alive. I think... She, I don't believe that the guy is going to um, kill her. He seems like he wants to take care of her, but you never know. You never know how um, Lena's going to twist it. Y'all let me sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Anyway, y'all, happy Sunday. Um, it's, been, um, it's been all the way real today. It's definitely been real. Um, thanks for watching. Y'all be easy. Peace.